Okay, so in 6.3, what did we actually learn? We learned about what? <coughs> we looked about, we, 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 we learned about sampling distributions, correct? Sampling distributions, correct? Right? And what, how is that different from the population versus the samples, right? Okay. So today we're going to talk about Central limit theorem. This is a fairly important theorem. Okay. This in this book is categorized as using we use this when we are talking about sample means. Okay, we're looking at sample means here. So let's say that I told you that the population, okay, so the population was normal, okay? And this is going to be your sample here. So I have a population of large n. I'm going to draw a sample of small n, okay? If I told you that the population, original population was normal, what would you expect this to be? You would expect this one to be also normal, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? If you, if this was right skewed, what do you think this would look like? Do you think this would look right skewed also? Okay, that's what you would guess, correct? Right. So let's look at the central limit theorem. And central, no, 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 not that. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, so let's do the example number one. Let's do example number one. Okay, look at the original data. If you look at the original data on the earthquake depths, that is definitely right skewed, correct? You can see it's definitely right skewed, okay? However, if I take samples, unexpectedly, the sampling distribution looks like what? It looks normal, doesn't it? If nothing else, it's roughly symmetric, right? No outliers, so you could probably say it's normal, okay? All right. So this is exactly what the central limit, central limit theorem says, okay? Regardless of what the population looks like, as long as you take enough samples, enough defined as this, as long as you take more than 30 samples, your sampling distribution is going to be normal, no matter what the population, original population distribution looks like. Okay, and that's what the central limit theorem says. Go on top, it says what? For all samples of the sample size n with an n greater than 30, the sampling distribution of x bar can be approximated by a Normal distribution, okay? Now it doesn't tell you it's a normal distribution. It tells you what the mean is going to be. It tells you that the mean is the same as a population. And we already talked about this, correct? We said they are the same because they are a unbiased estimator. There you go, thank you. It's an unbiased estimator, okay? So if you had a mean of this, your sampling mean is going to be exactly the same. We already talked about this, okay? Now, what it also goes on to tell you is that the, the standard deviation of the sample is going to be like this. This was this. Okay, remember we talked about the standard deviation was a biased estimator. Bias being, this is the bias that you're gonna add. You're gonna divide your original standard deviation by the square root of your sample size. Okay? All right. So this is the bias. So this is a biased estimator. Okay? So that's what the central limit theorem says. Okay? So we're good if this is normal, right? If this is normal, we know this is normal. If it's not normal, you take more than this samples, this is normal. Okay. What we did not discuss is what happens if this is not normal, 
and I take less than 30 samples. Okay, that's the only case that we haven't discussed yet. Okay, and that'll show up here quickly. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the key elements. 267. All right, given the population with any distribution has a mean of mu and standard deviation of sigma. The simple random samples of all the same size n are selected, so we're, okay, we're stuck in the sample size of n. Okay, then the mean is this, the sample mean is this, the sample standard deviation is that, and then it gives you the z-score conversion. Does that make sense? Do you see how that worked? In that It was this, right? Because this is a standard deviation, right? And this is this, which is the same as this, right? Okay, so if I do this, okay, this is kind of a misleading, all right? Because you're gonna have several different X bars, right? In your sampling distribution, correct? We talked about that, right? So we have, we're gonna have several different ones. Remember we did samples and we stacked them together and we said it was normal. So this X here is one of these, so it doesn't matter which one, right? So I'm trying to find the Z score of that specific samples mean. Do you understand that? So this is not easy. Okay, think about it. If I just if I just told you this, well, you would say, "Oh, Mr. On, this is you told us that this and this are the same." Okay. Well, they are and they are not, right? Because this is really what I'm telling you that's the same is that it is the mean of all these separate samples, correct? So when I say x bar here, I mean I'm meaning any one of these dots. If I want to know the z-score of that dot, again, it is how far away from the mean am I in standard deviation, right? How many standard deviations am I away from the mean? We good? I understand this. I got this. I have no idea what you're talking about. I somewhat. Where are we at? Show of thumbs, please. Tell me where you are so I can... I want to know if I can move on or not. Okay, I cannot move on yet. Okay, so remember when we were doing the homework in 6.3, right? In 6.3, we had 4, 5, and 9. Remember that question? We had the 4, 5, and 9, right? We had the 4, 5, five and 9. And we did, we said, what was the population mean? And you guys said, okay, well, we'll add the three together, divide it. And we said it was six. And then every single sample, remember we talked about where you calculated the mean for the two of them, right? So this is what these things are. That is what you calculated. Each sample's mean, okay? So I'm telling you now the Z-score for this sample would have been, since the mean is what? 4.5, it would have been 4.5 minus 6 <coughs> divided by, we, we didn't use the standard deviation, okay, so whatever the standard deviation would have been, okay, this guy and this guy, this is, this, so that's, that's what I'm telling you, this is what the z-score is, what they're telling you it is, right, for that sample, right, there, there were several different samples, right, if I did like 9 and 9, right, it would have been what? My mean for this would have been nine, correct? Nine minus, this is the sample mean, six, and you so on and so forth. Does this make more sense now? We better? Okay, all right. Okay, good, good, good. So that's that. That's that middle of the, that's what the practical rule is, okay? Considerations for the practical problem solving. Number one, check requirements. What other requirements here? What's the first one? Okay. 
okay, you have to have a random sample, right? When working with a mean from a sample, I'm going to look at That's not it. What does it say? Working with the mean from a sample, verify that the normal distribution can be used by confirming the original population has a normal distribution or the size is greater than 30, okay? Either this is, so th these are the two things that we know, right? If this is normal, we're good. If it's not normal, if we're good here, then it's normal, okay? If we do not know what the population distribution is and we are less than 30, then it, we are required to do a dot plot, stem and leaf plot, something that shows me the distribution of, the, of this guy, okay? And then I'm gonna see, I'm gonna look for skewedness, severe skewedness, or outliers. If I don't have any one of those two, I'm calling this normal, okay? All right? So you have, <laughs> the only way that it's not normal, okay, the only way that it's not normal is if, if this is not normal, and I am less than 30, and I found severe skewness or an outlier. Other than that, it's always, this is always gonna be normal. Are we good? Okay, good, all right. Okay, individual, okay, we just, we just talked about that. We're good with that. Notation, we're good with that. Okay, so let's see if we can actually apply this. Let's see if we can do example number two together. Example number two looks really long. Let's have Santos read that for us. The elevator in the car rental building got to Thank you. So we have, we have what? Five, okay, so A says, find the probability that one randomly selected adult male has a weight greater than 148. Okay. Well, we know that the normally adult, way, uh, adult male is what? 189 with 39? So we have 189, 39, good, I hear people bringing their calculators out already. Okay, so, and we want to know what, 147, eight? 140 what? 148? Okay, so I want to know, is greater than 148, so I want to know this guy here. Sam, how would I do that with my calculator? Norm CDF. Norm CDF, yes. So I would do norm CDF, lower level, lower limit would be? 148. 148, high limit would be? 1,000. 1,000, yeah, that sounds good. 189 and 39. From the numbers, what do we get? We got 85%, everybody got 0 0.85? 0 0.85. Okay. Okay, so that was A. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 0 0.8531. Okay, good. So B, find the probability that a sample of 27 randomly selected adult males has a mean weight greater than 148. So, in this one, now we're gonna do, this is the sample. What's my mean here? 189. 
it would be the same, right? Why? Because it's unbiased. It's unbiased estimator, right? It's an unbiased estimator. 189. Okay, what's the sigma here? What's my standard deviation for this one? 37.58. How would I calculate it? 39. I would take the 39, right? I have the 39. I would divide it by the square root of my sample size, which was what? 27. And if I run this, I get 7.51. 7.51. So now, again, I'm doing the same thing here, right? 148. What's my norm CDF numbers? 148. Well, okay. Norm CDF 148. 1,000. 1,000. 189. 189. Everything is the same except for 7.51. So you would expect this to be this to be greater than this or smaller than this? Why? Because the standard deviation is small is smaller, which means it is much more packed, right in the middle. So you'd have a much greater possibility here of being greater than one forty eight. Mm -hmm. And if you run the numbers, what do you get? Let's just say one. Oh, point nine 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 nine. Just like you said, exactly, just about one, right? Everybody is going to be greater. All right. Oh, we are good there. Okay. And we will.